Okay, so today is a very exciting video because today it's time for a big update on the MR2 Project Underdog, uh, the Turbo 4AFE uh, MR2 Mark 1. But much more importantly than the big update, today will be the first time that we actually take this car for a proper drive, first time for me as well. I did take a very, very short little illegal 200 300 meter drive right here in front of the garage i did like half throttle just to check if there was boost uh if everything works okay everything did not work okay but there was a bit of boost and today there should be more boost and today i think everything uh, will work okay because i think i have gone through all the major things the car is ready as much as a project car can be ready now this video is composed of two parts and there's chapters so you can uh, skip if you're already familiar with the build you can skip right to the driving section because the first part of the video will be an overview of what has been done some of the challenges some of the problems what little things are yet to be done we're gonna go uh, through everything that matters on this car right here and we're gonna start with the engine of course now the engine is the key component of this build and it is where the name Project Underdog comes from because the engine itself is an underdog. The engine is a Toyota 4AFE 1.6 liter 16 valve engine. This engine is the economy engine which has always been overshadowed by its performance counterpart, the Toyota 4A GE engine. Uh, nobody builds these, they're completely unpopular, there's no aftermarket for them, nobody cares about them, they're supposed to be the boring uh, engines from Corolla daily commuters but uh, I decided to give this one a chance because I think that in terms of engine anatomy this engine is not in any significant way worse than its performance counterpart the 4AGE so I put a big turbo on it some boost and put some stronger internals on it and decided to give it a chance to see how it performs the head has been completely rebuilt but it is bone stock bone stock specs on the 4AFE head now the intake manifold as well as the throttle body is completely stock. This is a very small throttle body. We'll see how that performs. If I remember correctly, it's something like 36 millimeters. It is absolutely tiny. We'll see how that performs. It will be interesting. This used to be a, a uh, air intake, a vacuum hose. It took air from uh, uh, after the air filter. Obviously when boost occurs, now there's air coming through this. So I plugged it up very elegantly using a nail, but this will be replaced with something nicer. It's probably going to do this when the engine is running. And it's going to sound like Rodna. What else we have? We have monster coils. Now these are AEM smart coils and people put these on like 1000 horsepower dragsters, rotaries, you know, whatever. These things are absolutely incredible. Massive, massive power, massive spark, massive dwell, massive everything. Now we really don't have the kind of power to justify these, but you can never have too much coil, so they definitely can't hurt. And the other reason I chose them is that they are easy to mount. You just make a little custom adapter plate and you just, you know, put them anywhere. And I couldn't really use the kind of usual OEM coil overplug solutions that people use, stuff like the Audi R8 coils or Toyota 1Z FE, I believe many use. You have nowhere, uh, my garage light just died, uh, never mind. Uh, people usually put these on their cars, but here, as you can see on the valve cover, you really have nowhere to drill holes for or anything that it's, it's impossible to modify it. You could weld stuff on, but then you deform the valve cover and then you have a leak on the gasket. Or if you try to drill holes, then you're gonna have a leak maybe through those holes, through the threads, whatever. So this is a much simpler, much more elegant solution. There's just four little bolts on the whole bracket. You unbolt them, a 10 millimeter bolts, and this whole thing uh, comes off. Super easy, super simple if you wanna do something with the wires or whatever. We also have the ugliest ever catch can uh, uh, solution. As you can see, there's an adapter. This catch can in input it was much larger than the PCV that comes from the valve cover. So I made, this was just a quick solution. This adapter and these clamps looks very ugly. I'm gonna try to change it, but I probably never will because you know it works and I don't care about aesthetics right now. I've been building far too much and I, all I wanna do is just drive, drive, drive. The intercooler is from a Audi 100 2.5 liter inline 5 uh, diesel engine. This was bought initially just for test fitting purposes, but actually I kept it. It's very big aluminum and tanks, very, very thick, and hopefully it's gonna work well. Uh, some more ugly, 
as you can see, solutions to keep air in there. We're going to do something about that, never. Now, uh, right now we do not have any sort of special ducting uh, that goes from, you know, hopefully underneath. Usually air in the MR2 Mark I, air doesn't come, people, some people think the air comes from up and then through the engine lid and down, that it doesn't work that way. Air comes from underneath, from underneath and goes out through the engine lid. It goes out through these little fans on the engine lid. And what tells you that air comes from underneath as well is these. These are under the car. And as you can see, air comes through them. And these exits are right there. They're at the end. And then they connect the airflow towards the engine bay. But I also think I'm gonna need some special ducting to ensure that air goes right uh, at this thing because the turbo intake is also right there and it goes here through there i don't know if you can see it there you go that's the turbo intake and goes onto my beautiful weld speed uh, turbo manifold unfortunately you cannot see its beauty anymore because we wrapped it because this is a mid-engine setup and i am concerned with heat I i'm also concerned with heat in the passenger cabin uh, so that's why i added this uh, heat deflecting material to hopefully minimize the amount of heat coming inside the interesting thing is uh, this right here and you might be able to recognize it if you're familiar with household heating and what this is this is an automatic bleeding little canister and this is used on household liquid based heating systems to bleed the system of air this was installed later after i failed to bleed my system of uh, coolant as you might know the mr2 mark one has the radiators in the front and all the coolant has to come here and there's a coolant overflow tank which used to go there but now it's here back in the trunk and this is from a uh, Renault Clio Mark II I think uh, we installed that because there was no space for a proper tank in there anymore so we relocated it in the back made a little custom bracket works fine and this is a uh, not a tank like before this is an actual expansion tank this gets pressurized the stock tank does not now the interesting the interesting thing is that originally the 4AGE engine which is that engine right there which was in the car the thermostat housing is this and as you can see on the thermostat housing there was this little attachment and on it it was a little plastic screw that you would open to bleed the system now uh, when we installed the 4AFE the 4AFE does doesn't have no such thing uh, doesn't have doesn't have doesn't have such a bleeding screw arrangement and i forgot to retrofit something on the on the 4AFE thermostat housing so what i did after i figured out that i put the coolant in there it was too late i just added this little uh system for uh, bleeding coolant it's constantly bleeding as air comes in this is automatic air gets trapped in this little canister and gets bled these two hoses are actually from the throttle body originally the throttle body has coolant circulating through it we got rid of that because we do not want hot coolant heating up the air that's going into the engine we want as cold air as possible going into a boosted engine so these two hoses have been routed through the little automatic bleeding canister and so far it seems that i finally managed to bleed my coolant the transmission is a e51 uh, Toyota transmission that is from the 4AGZE supercharged Toyota MR2 Mark 1. It's a very very strong transmission and then I added a Quaif ATB Torsen differential into it, limited slip differential for more cornering fun and potential so it should be a fun transmission the gears seem to work we rebuilt as much of it as possible as you know in terms of parts we could find because some of the stuff isn't available from dealerships anymore I bought whatever I could so that's the transmission we have to make we had to make custom engine transmission mounts because they do not align although the 4AGZE MR2 Mark 1 seems like the same car the mounts are not in the same place so that had to be custom done everything uh, also one of the half shafts is custom it's a thicker bigger uh, drive shaft so that was done as well now something else that was done is that the battery obviously the intercooler Originally, the battery is where the intercooler is, so we had to relocate the battery to the front. Uh, give me a second. 
So the battery is right here underneath the, I don't know if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna use my right hand. Yeah, it's not that I'm weak, I am weak, but it's not, you need to get this out at a very specific angle. There we go. And that's where our battery is. There's a little hold down bracket, as you can see. Uh, it's not very pretty, but it works. It is 100% stable. There's two very thick wires coming uh, down the underside of the car and they are, do not worry, safety people. They are protected by very thick corrugated plastic tubing. So there's no chances of anything getting to the electrical wires that are powering the battery. Now the big changes are also on the interior and finally after what feels like forever, the interior has been completely assembled. In the interior, the big change is, of course, that the red steering wheel is gone. We now have something more appropriate. We also have... That was, by the way, the fuel pump. Uh, we also have music. And this car being called Project Underdog, there's only one appropriate song to be played as the first song to be played uh, in the new edition of the build. I'm going to get let my... Uh, millennial audience, my fellow millennials, try and guess which song that is. Have you guessed yet? I think you get it, the name of the band, right? Um, I can't play anymore, of course, because due to copyright reasons, but I think that's more than enough. Uh, anyways, uh, the interior, of course, the real big change in the interior is the AEM Digital Dash. Now, getting this thing to fit in a way that looks tasteful and, you know, sort of OEM-ish and stockish, I'm gonna turn it off to hopefully get better lighting. Uh, there you go, the camera can now not suffer. As you can see, so getting this to fit properly was a real challenge because this whole assembly of plastics and there's metal underneath, it's very complicated. But we got it running, uh, we got it working, fitting properly, it's all stable and nice. And this thing, the digital dash, it's a real blessing for tuning, for everything, because you can choose all what you want to see on the dash at all times so it's real easy to monitor stuff and notice mistakes this thing helped me notice a very major problem that i had while tuning uh the 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 ecu and tuning everything to run right uh, i had configured my map sensor improperly you have to configure your input for the map sensor basically the map sensor resolution and i thought i had a two bar sensor but it was actually a two and a half bar, bar sensor and i would, would have never noticed the issue until i have seen that while the car was off the engine was not running but the display was on basically that's when the map sensor is sensing atmosphere and it should either be showing zero or minus one psi if you're a bit higher if you're living in a slightly higher elevation you should be seeing either zero or minus one psi or 14.7 psi or whatever but i was seeing vacuum minus six psi while the engine was not running and that told me that something had to be wrong the map sensor was either faulty or it was configured improperly unfortunately i went back into the settings and the ecu and it was improperly configured and i figured it out and after that everything started running properly this was a major challenge i wasted about two weeks of tuning you know because of that simple thing that i had forgotten i remembered in the emails when i was ordering i was asking for a two map sensor that's what i remember a two bar sensor that's what i remember but actually i changed it later and i forgot and these simple things can really make uh tuning and you know a build like this a nightmare but fortunately thanks to the dash it was resolved uh, something else that we have in the interior which is really cute is this little knob that i installed right here and this is your AEM switchable changeable thing you can set this up for example this is you know whatever boost one bar of boost then you do this and then it's 1.2 bar then you do it's 1.3 bar 1.4 or you want to change your map this is like a I don't know economy map this is your I don't know more aggressive ignition timing map whatever you can set this up to change you know anything as you're driving of course, the other change in the interior is that behind the driver's seat, we have this forest, this, this snake pit 
of wires. I will have to make some sort of cover for that so it's nicer and tidier and not like this. Uh, now, also, if you have any questions uh, about this, something that I forgot you're interested in, you're doing a build, uh, many, things on, many things on this have been done for the first time. A lot of lessons have been learned. So if you have questions about anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I'm uh, eager and happy to spread the knowledge and help anyone who's in the process of doing uh, a build like this or similar or turbocharging anything or whatever. There, of course, will be uh, in the future more videos. Uh, on this and on some of the details and how to set a boost control and whatever you know the switchable thing i just show you show you whatever i think that's enough talking for now i think now it's time to start this thing up and take it for a drive Are ready to go this is honestly a bit too exciting but still I want to be cool for my first drive so I'm gonna get my proof that I have spent too much money at a Toyota dealership this is how you know that you have spent come on too much money at a Toyota dealership they give you a pair of horrible cheap sunglasses that are probably bad for your eyes okay is the belt gonna touch the mic no headlights on we have oil pressure, we have battery, we have RPM, air fuel ratios seem to be normal. It is happening. There's a truck. I'm going to close the passenger side window to hopefully give you guys better audio. We got a camera in the back for an additional angle. Okay, so far so good. Everything seems to be moving okay. A lot of traffic. I would say moved like 10 centimeters. And I'm saying everything seems to be okay. I mean, this is what project cars are like. There's always a big dose of fear. Because a lot of this has been built by somebody. And that somebody is me. Okay. Seems to need a lot of throttle to get it going. Okay, feels nice, transmission nice, clutch impressive, we're taking it slowly here, suspension as before, okay there's some pedestrian traffic here possibly, we're gonna wait a bit more and see what happens, okay let's go a bit of throttle, okay We have boost, ladies and gentlemen. We have boost. That was like 40% throttle. I couldn't quite see how much boost we made. And as I predicted, we have massive flutter. That is a lot more than I expected. Let's do one more. natural aspiration and I think it's addictive okay there's a curve I'm not gonna do this through a curve because I have no idea the suspension hasn't been aligned and I removed some things so I'm not sure about anything but everything so far seems nice as before a bit wallowy but it's okay tunnel we kind of missed that one that was just 4000 rpm we are on stock 80s brakes, so we are going to keep this contained. Okay, this is a million times better than I expected for a first drive. It's it's very smooth, very OEM-ish. Okay, let's see how much boost we actually made. Okay, we got around 7 PSI, 7, 8 PSI. I can see that, so it seems very good. The AFRs seem to be going stupid rich under boost. I did put that as a as a precaution to be safe, but they're doing like nine, which is a bit too much. I would prefer 
ten and a half something. Okay. But honestly, I'm impressed. This is it's drivable. And I mean the turbo now isn't hooked up to boost control, it's directly hooked up to the wastegate actuator. So whatever the spring, the stock spring boost of the max speeding rod turbo is, that's the boost we're getting, which seems to be 7-8 psi. This is third gear. This is 50% throttle. Oh my god. It, it is crazy. I love boost. I love boost. Honestly, this is the, this whole moment is a bit unreal. I did. I swear, I did nearly zero road tuning. One or two. I don't count the second one because it's nothing. I. Oh, that was the GoPro. The GoPro was gone. Tunnel. Too late. I'm afraid to go full throttle. I'm just doing like 50% throttle. That's all I'm, I'm doing. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm looking if those are cops behind me, but they're not. I'm fully road legal. I'm breaking zero laws, but cars like this attract attention of the police. It's also not allowed, except for the flutter. The flutter is hilarious. Honestly, I kind of like the sound. It's, I mean, this is 7 PSI, this is not enough to hurt the turbo, so I might keep the flutter or I might make a little U-turn now and go back to the garage and try to adjust the ball of valve and see what happens. Honestly, I just want to keep driving. I just want to keep driving and looking for opportunities to hit boost. Crap, 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 shit. That was a giant pothole that I could not avoid because of the bus. Let's make a U-turn here. Everything works, indicators, everything. What I wanted to say is, I did one, that's 300 meters, little drive for the first time when I drove it with an incorrectly configured map sensor. Let me try to reestablish the, the GoPro. You're gonna see something disgusting now. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. It's back. So I did one little 300 meter drive with the incorrect map sensor, incorrectly configured map sensor to see how the car works and everything seemed okay, but I, I just went to second gear and then came back. There was no driving like this and it seemed okay. And I was, there's probably gonna be issues when I actually drive it, but there doesn't seem to be anything major. Even the light throttle operation is okay. The clutch is, I am amazed, this is the MRP metal, sintered metal clutch, which is which is supposed to hold massive power. They advertised it as street friendly and it is correctly advertised. This is street friendly, it's a powerful clutch, but it feels really nice to operate. I'm really impressed. Okay, now we're gonna give it a bit more. That's fuck, fuck, fuck. That was full throttle and this, sh shit. It, it feels like it wants to do something. I think one of my tires, rear tires, is deflated, so I'm not gonna go crazy. I think this is a pretty crazy car. Boost seems to hit at around three and a half thousand RPM. It's a bit lethargic below that, but a lot less than I expected. This is very drivable. This is street friendly. This is usable. This is... What I'm experiencing right now is the absolute polar opposite of my bike car thing. This build was a lot of effort to build it, okay? A lot of hardware work, a lot of wiring, a lot of ECU stuff, I mean wiring, but once you actually put it all together, you have about half an hour of configuring the ECU, and then I had a, a couple of days of basically just messing around with the maps and stuff and trying to eyeball it, and now I'm driving and it feels I don't know, honestly, it feels like that's it, it's ready. And the bike car thing was not that much work, very little wiring, very little work uh, before, but then a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of work after that, and you could never, and I could never get the idle, for example, to be nice, or the AFRs to be just like I wanted. I changed the jets a million times. So these two things are totally different. They're both charming and fun in their own ways, but this is 
a lot of work, uh, you know, in the initial stage, in the building stage, and then very little troubleshooting. And bicarbs is very little work in the initial stage and a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, what do I prefer? I prefer this because of the boost. <laughs> no, seriously, this is crazy. There's a lot of traffic. I cannot do anything here and uh, I need to check that rear tire. But we're gonna do one more. There's gonna be a tunnel and then I'm gonna go back to the garage and then I'm gonna try to set up the ball valve uh, to open. There's a spring, there's a little spring on the bottom, uh, which you, I think I'm gonna undo. Now the spring, a bolt, you undo the bolt to uh, really to reduce preload on the spring and I think it should open. Because I didn't touch it, I, I had no reference to anything. But honestly, I like the flutter. Ah, uh, there's a big old truck in front of me. Which is a bit sad. I think the brakes will be if I do drive this car to its potential, which seems to be huge at the moment. This, this just feels really aggressive. I'm gonna slow down to let the truck move away. I cannot slow down enough. Why is there always a truck? I need to readjust my seat. Okay, I'm gonna give the truck a bit more space. Come on, trucky boy. And then we're gonna hit one in the tunnel. oversteer you could ask from an MR2 because the whole car wants to lift up when you're accelerating crazy okay I'm gonna the garage could be very close by I'm gonna go back to the garage and then and then I'm gonna try to set up the ball valve also everything so far seems to be good. Oil temperature okay, 84 Celsius. Water temperature 80 Celsius. Air temperature 44 Celsius. Everything seems to be really, really nice. I'm just doing like 5,000 RPM and it's fun. 40, 50% throttle. Full throttle, the car kind of shimmy. So we have to try full throttle somewhere. Not in traffic. This is I'm keeping things safe as I think I should with something as novel and untested as this. But, but I, I cannot help but be proud of, of how it's performing for its first ever drive. I don't know. Okay, garage here. Let's go fix the ball valve. Okay, so I have my little Allen key. The ball valve is right there and here at the bottom. There's a little, if I remember correctly, a bolt, yes, and now we're gonna undo it a couple of turns and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, blow valve has been adjusted, but uh, uh, there's no luck. We still have turbo flutter for some reason. I do not know why. Uh, I tried a bunch of different settings, but even from maximum bolted in to maximum bolted out let me just get on the road I tried a bunch of different settings but we we still have massive flutter uh, so far I'm super happy to report that that's the only issue everything else seems to be working much better than I expected too good I'm, I'm afraid of how well this is working I'm afraid there's gonna be some sort of weird catastrophic consequence I have no idea I hope not uh, I really hope not. I don't want to jinx myself. Don't jinx yourself. Uh, anyways, still have water. No, no, I don't mind. Honestly, it sounds so great. But I have to figure out why. Why do I still have a uh, compressor surge, if you want. I don't know, how do these Aust Australians call it? Some silly word? Dove? Pigeon? No? Something? I don't know. I forgot. Anyways, I'm gonna collect my winnings for today because this has... This is far far more than I expected and I'm super happy I'm gonna figure out why the ball valve isn't opening 
uh, I have connected it correctly. Maybe the hose is plugged, so it's not sensing the boost. Maybe I don't know. Maybe seven psi isn't enough to activate it. Although it should be because it's adjustable. But I'm gonna end it here today. There's a little tunnel, and that's gonna be my goodbye gift to you guys. I am beyond happy. I'm overjoyed. Gonna go wash the car now after what two years. So yeah. Of course, there's a truck. Please turn. Go away. Why does there have to be a truck? I wanted to do the tunnel. We're gonna let it move away again. And then we're gonna break. One more goodbye. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Oh, no, no, no. The tunnel is very wet. watching thanks for everything thanks for I don't know thank you for this day uh, this car really redeemed itself today a while ago I published a video where I said you know that I'm kind of sick of working and that I, I bought a brand new bike and I said how great this was that I could just enjoy it without working on it for a moment there I thought that I outgrew project cars but in days like this you realize that you can't buy this you can't buy these experiences of working and putting things together and creating something that cannot be bought and then that something rewards you and I'm just I'm, I'm too happy I also want to use the opportunity I mean this car is also for me in a way really special because it's a collective effort of, of so many people there's so many stories in this car when I sit on it my, my dash cover, okay? My dash cover is a gift from one of my first subscribers. Uh, the Recently, one of my patrons helped me uh, figure out how the idle air control valve works. Another patron actually helped me finally procure in Germany a non-broken sunroof and side skirts, which I never have. So many people, so many messages, so many experiences, so many... I mean, this car really is all about, has become all about living and enjoying and just going out there and doing it and boosting it and whatever it's an old weird car but it's an amazing amazing experience i'm really grateful for this day to this car and to everyone and yeah thanks a lot guys